my daddy used to say, there are no answers in this world, there are only questions. He was a lawyer. <laughs> um, he wasn't overtly spiritual, but he knew some stuff. And I think he understood that. In this world, if you, if you really go into any specific question, it will only bring up more and more questions and you will not arrive at certitude until you know <laughs> beyond any shadow of doubt. And that, that will not come through analytical reasoning your logical mind, as Jesus says in the Course, that will only come through direct experience. The Greek word is gnosis, G-N-O-S-I-S, uh, -I and that is where uh, we get our word knowledge, know and knowledge, and, and it goes even further back to the word jnana, which is a Sanskrit word, also meaning direct intuitive knowledge or direct experiential knowledge of spiritual reality. That's jnana, that's gnosis, that's knowing as, as Jesus speaks about knowing in A Course in Miracles. Um, so let's not um, fool ourselves that we're going to get to an answer that satisfies everyone in regard to any question. And, and maybe especially in regard to questions that we all have an ego investment in. It's not going to happen. If we have any ego investment, you know, that, that's the thing is that, and we may, we, we may fool ourselves that we don't have an ego investment. But if you, if you have even a little bit, you will not be ready or open to see the truth as it really is. Or maybe you will, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to speak too categorically here or dogmatically. You know, this is, if anything, what this channel content is all about is to bring up the questions and hopefully to see, to, <laughs> you know, this is not to answer your questions. This is to question your answers. And if you have set opinions, and you may not think that they're opinions, but that's what is, um, I, I would say, is open to question, <laughs> is, is your beliefs and your things that you, you think are bedrock, maybe innate necessarily so. <laughs> things that you're liable to read in the Bible, right? That ain't necessarily so. That was, that was a great, I think it was a Gershwin song way back when. Um, I think, um, you know, keep the, in mind, this is, this is um, a, uh, just one way of looking at things. This is not a hard and fast thing that I'm about to say, but I would say rather than God wanting you to believe blindly, God would, God would smile approvingly on you questioning everything because what Jesus seem, seems to be saying in the course is the way to get back is through the questioning, questioning every value, every belief, every thought that you hold dear, and not getting into getting fixed or fixated on any one way of looking at things. And that that's helpful for all of life, everything we do. You know, we, 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 we get attached, we get we cling, and we get attached to all sorts of things. Not just beliefs, but 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 objects and people and relationships and and um, uh, whatever habits and obsessions we, <laughs> we develop, and it's hard to get out of those. And we know that they, would, on whatever level, 
um, that we that we're entrenched in those things, we know that it's not healthy and it's not helping, not serving. So with that, <laughs> with that five minutes that I just uh, gave that little spiel, let's talk about some deep shit <laughs> that is, um, you know, still dividing the world of A Course in Miracles. And not, and I, you know, I for one will say that ain't such a bad thing. I, you know, <laughs> the world is divided. You know, everyone is divided. The, 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 the world of A Course in Miracles is no different than anything else in this world. I mean, people point to look at the political situation in the United States, you know, with um, the, the, divi the divisiveness in that regard, but it's really been that way. You know, it's, it's happening now for sure. And maybe it's, maybe it's even more intense right now, but it's been happening all along. You know, it's not any different than what it's at, what it's been maybe since time immemorial <laughs> for all we know, as far as, you know, politics and, 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 um, you know, if you want to, um, keep your friends, <laughs> you, you don't talk about politics with them or religion. Um, I'm happy I can do this on this channel because no one really knows me and I'm just, I'm not talking to anyone in particular. I'm not trying to correct anyone. I'm not trying to judge anyone. And I, I would like to think if I met you in person, I wouldn't do that either, <laughs> but I, pro I probably would too, because that's what egos do. And as long as you have an ego, you're probably going to judge and you're probably going to think that you know something that other people don't. But, um... You know, the divisiveness in the world of A Course in Miracles, as far as I'm concerned, is a healthy thing because it keeps us all, it, 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 in, an, in an ideal sense, it's, it's going to keep us more honest and it's going gonna, it's gonna to raise the lever, level of discourse. It's going gonna, it's gonna to keep people on their toes and, and seek to really understand A Course in Miracles and not think that they do. And I think what I would like to see more of, which we don't see in the world of A Course in Miracles, partly because A Course in Miracles is still, you know, there's no like, it's not an academic study. It's not in, as far as I'm, cons I'm aware, not concerned, but as far as I'm aware, it's not taught in universities. It's not a, um, it's not necessarily a mainstream thing and so it's kind of almost like an anything goes type of situation because it's not a regulated system. It's a, it's a self-study course. That, that's what Helen seemed to understand it to be. She said, this is a self-study course for you to get in touch with your own inner teacher, your own inner guidance. It's not to become the base of, basis of another cult. Would she have, would she have thought that making A Course in Miracles into a, a religion or a church or forming a church or forming a group um, with spe a specific doctrine concerning A Course in Miracles or, um, you know, um, putting out a version of A Course in Miracles that she did not put her blessing on, would she have, would she have been okay with that? And you might say, well, even if she wasn't okay with it, she's not the final authority on all this. You know, Jesus is, or, or God is, or <laughs> however you understand it. So it doesn't matter what she thought, but what is for the greatest good of all and great, and, and for the, and, and so maybe, you know, people have said, well, this whole thing with the copyright and and um, the fact that now there's all these different versions of A Course in Miracles out there that are beyond what Helen, Bill, and Ken put together, you know, when which was published in 1976. Maybe that's all a good thing. I mean, I would say it is a good thing because it's happening, right? It's ha it happened. <laughs> so it's all, there must be some 
reason for it. Um, what I'm going to read you here in a second suggests that Helen probably would have been bothered by it. But of course, she had an ego herself, right? Um, and in the end, it doesn't really matter. You know, if it's helpful to people, great. And what what um, I'm, I'm going to read you is to say that no matter what version of A Course in Miracles you read, whether you read the Ord text or you read, read the Foundation for Inner Peace version, which is Helen and Bill and Ken's, or you read um, Robert Perry's, um, you know, from the hand, original handwritten notebooks of, of Helen Schuchman. Um, whatever version you read, and there's, you know, there's, there's a bunch of other ones out there. Hugh Lynn Casey, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the point is, is that you will get the course no matter what, right? The course is there. You may be a little confused though, you know, and so I want to just read a little bit. Now, if you have never looked at this, this is really worth looking at. And I would, I would challenge you to, to read it, actually, if you have not. And read it with an open mind and an open heart. What it is, is it's on ACIM.org. What you would do, I'm going to send the link. I'm going to put, post the link. But they have a... They have, um, you know, a, a bar that, and one of the things is read ACIM and you just uh, click on that and then it gives you a bunch of different options. And then it, there's one called historical material. You click on historical material and then you go to editing history. And this was um, several sections. It's called the history of the manuscripts of A Course in Miracles written by Ken Wapnick, Dr. Kenneth Wapnick, PhD. Um, and basically he gives a whole overview, he, you know, he gives his point of view. And I think that if you actually read it, like I said, with an open heart and mind, I think you will, you will see a lot of value in what he says and, and perhaps a correction to some of the myths and misconceptions that are floating about out there. Now, you, you know, it's like, it's like with anything, people are, if, if they've heard something, when, if you've heard something first and you thought that way for a long time, and then new evidence comes to light or something new comes to light that to, to, to kind of challenge what you've been thinking, it's difficult to let go of that, especially if you have an egoic investment in it. <clears throat> some of the things he says, I, again, I'm just going to, I'm just going to point out some of the interesting things Ken says in this. He also says that, says it in that interview I mentioned in my last video with Kenneth Bach. It's on YouTube, the Kenneth Bach interview with, with Ken Wapnick. Um, Helen, you know, one thing he says is Helen was hearing her inner voice before the course started. It, we actually started in that summer. Um, she actually had been hearing that inner voice, which she understood to be Jesus. One thing, she, what, one thing Ken says is that early on, um, it was like she was, in the first few months, it was like she was sitting on the sofa talking to Jesus in her mind. It was not words that she was hearing, it was more like she was seeing words. This is what she told Ken, Ken Wapnick. Then after the first few months, um, and she was, she was somewhat influenced by Edgar Cayce in the, in the early, and you can see a little bit of that in the early, in the Urtex. If you look at the Urtex and the handwritten notes stuff, you definitely, you, you definitely see quite a difference in the, in, in the style and the, um, you know, the way that, that Jesus is talking, to, especially when he's giving personal material to Helen and Bill, which they were guided later to take out completely. 
They took all the personal material out. They took all of the material that was about specifics. And Ken makes the point in what he writes that Helen was often off about specifics or she misunderstood what the spe specifics meant. For example, she, she thought she was gonna die when she was 72. Uh, no, when she was 71, she died when she was 72. She thought Bill was, gonna, was going to die um, at a certain point and she was off about that. Um, she was off in regard to specifics about a bunch of things. And you would think, well, if Jesus really was guiding her, how could she be off? Now, psychics are off too, you know. <laughs> psychics have been known to be off about predicting the future. I don't think there, there are many psychics that have 100% accuracy in that regard. And even great um, mystics and yogis and so on have been wrong. For example, Satya Sai Baba, he was considered to be one of the great um, avatars of, of, you know, the, of the current age, basically. But he was off in his, in his predictions. Yogananda was off in his predictions. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to spe specifics, that, you know, that, that's the problem is that, you know, we, we would all love to have this specific guidance but we have to be careful about that specific guidance. Ken says though, that in regard to the, the general and the universal, it was completely on, on, right? What Jesus was writing, taking away the specifics, it's, you know, it, 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 it is a universal teaching that is true for all time. Um, Helen did not believe the words she took down were sacred. I would, I would say, look, read this yourself, and, and this is Ken's point of view, but this is based on what, what he understood. He, Helen and Bill d definitely understood that the form could be changed of the course, and they did change the form, and, and Ken was part of that too, um, but not the content. The content remained largely exactly the way it came through. Um, but the form changed and, and obviously um, words got taken out. Now, the question is, was that completely guided by Jesus or was did Helen's ego get in the way? I don't think Ken's did. I don't think Ken had that much of a say. People think that he did. But remember, he was just this young guy at that time. Helen was like twice his age or whatever. And she was a very will willful person. And Ken says, you could never get Helen to do something she did not want to do. And she had an idea of what the Course of Miracles was gonna look like from almost from the very beginning. Um, so she actually was the one that, that, that provided a lot of the form, but not the content. The content was not something that she was consciously able to, um, bring herself. That was, that was coming from a higher mind, higher source, which she understood to be, understood to be Jesus, but, but it did, doesn't have to be Jesus per se. I hope this is all making sense, but but anyway, let's let's go on. She was always very proud of the poetic nature of the writing. This is Ken talking about Helen. She was proud of the course. She she also was scared of it, and and she was also uh, had an ambivalent relationship with it. But she had an ambivalent relationship with everything. <clears throat> Let's just 